I've wanted to do this one for a long time. So, I mean, here we are. Yeah, same, man. I, uh, I see you do a lot of big interviews with all the top names. So I've just been patiently waiting. <laughs> well, here you are. And I think it's so interesting because on TV, you're kind of an enigma because you speak with your actions. You don't speak that much with your words. So I, I think there might actually be a lot of fans who this might be the first time they're ever hearing you speak. This is very true. So, yeah, I'm excited to, to get this side of me into the light as well. By the way, how could how does a human become this large? <laughs> uh, well, I think I have a little bit to thank my father for that because um, I don't think I ever made it taller than him. I think he always had me by at least a half an inch. But um, maybe today I would have been taller than him. Um, so he was a big dude. But I've been I started working out seriously uh, when I was a junior in high school. And trust me, I did everything wrong for years, but over the years, uh, dialing in the diet and proper form and just really honing the craft of bodybuilding and training. I've been, as you can see, working my butt off to get this big. Guys, Valentine's Day is now just a few weeks away and jamesallen.com is gonna help you give her the perfect gift this year. jamesallen.com is the premier website for engagement rings and fine jewelry and that's where I found my girlfriend's gift for Valentine's Day this year. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that my girlfriend's name is Rachel. She's awesome and she's been talking about getting a pair of diamond earrings for months. So we're gonna surprise her with these right here. Kinda hope she's not watching this because that would really ruin the surprise, but how beautiful are these? So when you take a look on their website, jamesallen.com, it's not just beautiful diamond earrings. There's also diamond tennis bracelets and necklaces. And if you're in the market for it, if it's that time in your life, they are the best place to get an engagement ring. Check this out. You can design and customize the perfect engagement ring based on your preferences and your budget. I mean, you can choose the color and the clarity, the type of metal you want, the carat size, how big that stone in the middle is gonna be. And you can choose whether you want an earth created or a lab created diamond. And by the way, guys, lab created diamonds are structurally, chemically, and visually identical to earth created diamonds at 30% less. So lab created diamonds. Good call. And this is the best part. JamesAllen.com is hooking you up in a big way. They're giving you 25% off for the perfect Valentine's Day gift for her just by clicking that link in the description. There's no code required. Just click that link and you'll automatically get 25% off applied to your orders. So you can get her the perfect Valentine's Day gift like I got for Rachel right here. JamesAllen.com. Who were your inspirations to make you start working out? Because everybody has a story, whether it's an athlete or it's a family member, but who was it for you? Dave Batista. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Dave Batista. So I was a junior in high school in 2005. Um, 2005, Dave Batista was evolution, peak evolution era you know, starting to branch out on his own. And I was just amazed by him. And I personally think he has the best physique in the history of professional wrestling. Um, if you're just talking about looks alone, his physique was just astounding to me. And I just looked at him and I was like, yeah, that's what we're going for. <laughs> was he? He's like 300 plus pounds, which is insane. Dude, he's a monster. So I've, I still struggle to accept the fact that I'll never be quite as gigantic as Batista, but as close as I can get, I'm happy with. Well, you're, I think you're getting there. I mean, you are, we are a very large man. <laughs> we might um, be close. We might be close. <laughs> I'm one of the things that we have in common is Cleveland. I actually spent five years in Cleveland. I was, I was working as an entertainment reporter for the CBS affiliate in Cleveland. And I'm still a diehard Browns fan for Better or for worse, as a result yeah, of that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Dude, we could talk all day about that. It's uh, oh, it's uh, it's painful sometimes, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm a Cowboys and a Browns fan, so I'm a double loser. 
<laughs> what would you say it was about growing up in Cleveland that really helped to shape the person that you are now? So I, I currently live about 15 minutes east of Cleveland. Um, growing up, I was actually- Which city, born- by the way? What's that? Willoughby. Which city do you live in now? Willoughby. Willoughby. Oh, I know it well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but growing up, I was born and raised about 40 minutes east of Cleveland in a little town called Middlefield. I know and that one as well. Do you really? Yeah. Okay, that's rare because it is such a small little Amish town. Um, I mean, my graduating class was 80 people. You know, we had Amish people at our school. Like it was a very, very small town. Um, grew up pretty poor. So small town, not a lot of money, not a lot to do. So we would entertain ourselves by going in the backyard and wrestling. You know, there's days where we would, we would go down the road to my buddy's house and we would take every mattress while his parents and sister was at work. We would take everybody's mattress off the bed, drag them down to the backyard, put them on a tarp so we didn't get grass stains on them, and then put tarp over them, and we would just have a field day. That would trans- someone with your size is probably playing a lot of sports growing up. So what were your sports? All right. So two things with this. I loved basketball, baseball, football. Uh, still love playing all of those to this day. Uh, especially basketball. Basketball was like my real passion. However, it was not always this big. Believe it or not, I was actually the runt uh, up until uh, like about my junior year, I finally started to grow taller. And that's what made me go, okay, I'm getting taller. Let's see if we can get bigger. So I really didn't even start to put on size till my senior year. And then it was well after that, before I really started to grow. So how big were you when you entered high school? Oh man, my, when I was a freshman, I was lucky if I was five, two. No way. Yeah. As a freshman, I was at the most five, four, but that's pushing it. And, you know, I still had like that, uh, you know, pre puberty kind of chubbiness going on and, I just, everybody was blowing up except me. And it was very frustrating. And I was just like, so in my head, you know, fortunately at the time I was a huge Jeff Hardy fan. So in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to be the little guy. Mm -hmm. So I started practicing flips and corkscrews. And I was on a trampoline every single day of my life after school, perfecting moonsaults and swantons and just everything. And then, of course, I perfect all these acrobatic moves and then I blow up, you know, after my senior year. But that's also you see a little bit of that today. You know, your body doesn't forget some of that stuff. So you see me bust out an occasional swan time even today. At what point did you realize, like, I love wrestling enough that I could actually try to pursue this and maybe possibly get paid to do this one day? Oh, man. I'm, I've always been such a big dreamer that I believed it when I was in elementary school. I mean, it was, I was locked in, like, this is what I'm going to do. And there's nothing that's going to, you know, bear me away from that. And I was very confident, even, you know, through school, elementary, junior high, high school, especially that this is what I was going to do for a living. And, and it was a weird thing because I, I knew what my life was going to be almost to a fault, probably to a fault. I think I, I was overconfident while I was leaving high school because I, I knew I was going to be the superstar pro wrestler. You know, life happens and you make some bad choices. And I went very far from that path for a number of years and fortunately found my way back and destiny, uh, destiny's destiny, man. It doesn't matter how far you go off track. If you're born to do something, you'll find a way. You mentioned making mistakes along the way, and I'm curious, what's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself from some of these mistakes? A few of the biggest things is, well, A, don't be overconfident. Don't be, you have to be confident, of course. You have to be sure of yourself, 
Um, maybe I was a little too cocky about it. Maybe, maybe I, you know, this is a long time ago now, but I think maybe I, I just, I thought it was so guaranteed that I didn't have to work for it. Maybe. Mm. And, and I think, and I think I just kind of took my off the ball. It was too much friends, too much party rather than training, dieting. Did so I, I would say just keeping your focus, keeping your circle small, make sure you surround yourself with people that either have the same dreams as you or ambitions as you. Yeah. Just watch who you surround yourself with and make sure you're consistent with uh, the things you're supposed to be doing for your future. Before you signed with AEW, I know you had an audition or a tryout with WWE. Do you feel like having that audition with them made you go, okay, this is possible. I've dreamed this for a long time. This is possible. I'm going to go wrestle professionally somewhere. God, almost the opposite. Really? Because, I mean, I aced that tryout. I mean, with flying colors, and they didn't want me. Hmm. So for the first time in my life, I went, oh, well, maybe this isn't going to happen. You know, fortunately, I stuck with it, and I was determined to make it happen one way or another. And I thank God every day that AEW came about. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, being denied, that was a unique experience and a unique feeling. Um, but it put me where I needed to be. So I'm happy for it. Yeah, because I think there was a point in time before there were other options where it was like, all right, if I didn't get signed from this tryout, I got to wait for my next tryout and then hope to get signed with that one. If that doesn't work, I just got to hope for the next one. Dude, at that time, that was it. Yeah. I mean, you had impact and I was emailing them, you know, every other week, like, because realistically, if it wasn't WWE, the only real thing left was impact. Mm -hmm. And if not impact, then you're just trying to get booked on the indies because that's what, you know, they said, go make a name for yourself. <laughs> I accepted that challenge. And I, <laughs> Funny how that works out, right? <laughs> yeah. How you like my name now? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, man, it's, uh, you, you know, I just kept going. I, I was trying to get booked on like bigger indie shows to make a name for myself, you know, try to get out there. And fortunately it wasn't too long after that. Um, in which I started to, I did like warrior wrestling in Chicago, which is a little bit of a bigger uh, promotion um, and started branching out a little bit, went to Canada and then uh, Greek town wrestling. And, and then fortunately woke up one day and had a phone call from QT Marshall and the rest is history. How do you think you got on QT's radar? Uh, it was, active, man, it's one of those perfect storms. It was like three or four different people had mentioned my name to Cody all within like three weeks time. Um, so it started with Britt Baker because her and I came up together in IWC in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, we both pretty much started off there. So she had mentioned my name to Cody like, Hey, you know, my friend Ward though, he's pretty good. You should give him a look. Okay. Um, then, uh, uh, gosh, what's his name? Um, they have a, a guy that they're working with at the, that QT partners with at the factory um, that came and did a seminar and uh, Lloyd and he, uh, he was in WCW Glacier. I kept wanting to say Sub-Zero. He did the Sub-Zero gimmick Glacier. We would have figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I knew his real name, but I was trying to think of the, his work name. Um, he did a seminar at IWC and watched me work. And he ended up watching my match and calling Cody the next day going, hey, you might want to take a look at this guy. Um, and then I think there was one more individual from Warrior Wrestling that had meant to contact Cody about me. So it was like this perfect storm. He kept hearing my name from so many people that he went, okay, let's give this guy a shot. Yeah. And then did they immediately go, this is the person we're going to pair with MJF? Not immediately. <clears throat> when, when, when I first met them, it was just, okay, we're going to do it. Um, you know, start coming up with some things and, and when we'll figure stuff out. And it was, it was, it was months before that, that kind of worked itself out where they decided to go that route. What's the, I mean, you've spent a lot of time now with Max and oh, yeah. he's a very difficult person to like. He's an awful <laughs> individual. 
What's the biggest thing you think you've learned from, from him? Man, I think the biggest thing is just like the business aspect of things, um, like knowing your worth and and making sure you're getting the most um, out of situations. And he has a really good mind for the business and storytelling. Mm-hmm. So I think the biggest things is just the business aspect of it and then things that make sense things that truly do or do not make sense as far as storytelling. Mm. We saw you in the ring recently with CM Punk, which was, look, it's so cool that CM Punk is back wrestling again. What was it like to have a match with him? Dude, honestly, I'm still waking up every morning just feeling like I hit the lottery. Like, I assume this is like, if you hit the lottery, you wake up every day, just like, oh yeah, this is my life now. It's kind of the feeling that I just, it's, it brought such a sense of peace and fulfillment over me. And it, it's weird. Like those big matches, usually leading up to it, I'm very tense. I'm very focused. I'm very tense. It's honestly kind of hard to be around me those few days leading up to a big match. Cause I'm just so zoned in. And this time I wasn't at all. And I think it was simply because I didn't believe it. Hmm. Like I, like I'm not wrestling CM Punk in three days. So it's just another normal day. And then the day of the show, it all hit me. (laughs) It all hit me the day of. I was like, okay, this is happening. And that was possibly the most nervous I've ever been before a match. Um, But that was also the most comfortable I've ever been in a match. Mm. It's a very unique experience, but it, yeah, the fact that I got to wrestle CM Punk, that's something I never thought I'd be able to do. And even though you didn't win, like you very much were put over in that match. Like it, you came out of that match looking really good. I didn't win, but I won. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, that was, that was a, that's a bucket list item that you didn't even know could be on your bucket list. Like, you know, when you saw him with AEW. So Absolutely. now what's on the bucket list? you know, I almost want to put in impossible things on that bucket list. Like now you can, right? It's like, man, dude, can we get Dave Batista to make an appearance? Can we get Jeff Hardy in? That can seems have, pretty possible. Can I have a six man tag match with Matt and Jeff Hardy as my tag team partners? I think the answer to that's actually yes. <laughs> Yeah, that would that would be at the top of the bucket list. Wow. And what about, I mean, I think the answer is probably obvious here, but when it comes to championships, is that something that's on your radar? Not to sound too selfish, I want them all. I, I, I would like to hold the tag team titles. I want the TNT title. I want the heavyweight title. Doesn't have to be all at the same time. Cool if they are, but individually over time, I want to accomplish as much and everything I can within this company. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Jeff Hardy earlier. Was he your guy growing up? Yeah. Well, so I've been a lifelong fan. So you have the generations. So when I was a little kid, it started with Bret Hart. He was the first one that really captured my attention, him and Mr. Perfect. Um, And then I get a little bit older and it was Kevin Nash and The Rock. Um, especially Kevin Nash, man. I was obsessed with Kevin Nash when I was a kid for some reason. I just thought he was the coolest, man. Um, And then after Nash, it was very much Jeff Hardy for a very long time and only Jeff Hardy. Have you had a chance to meet all of these people that you just listed? I've met Brett. I've met Kevin Nash and I've met Jeff. Um, I've yet to meet The Rock or Batista. Um, so hopefully one day, uh, cause those two men still are my motivation and inspire me to this day, specifically those two. I mean, what the rock is doing with his life now. Well, I mean, Batista too, the same thing. Yeah. I mean, they're just taking over Hollywood and doing big, big things. So they still motivate me to this day, but yeah, Jeff Hardy was, he was the one for a long time until, um, Batista came about and I'm in high school and I'm starting to work out. And then it was very much Batista. 
Were you inspired at all by Goldberg? And the reason I ask is because he's Bill Goldberg. You are Michael Wardlaw. I don't know if everybody knows that's your legit last name. Now you're the one name, last name guy. Same with Dave Batista. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. So I've, it's so weird even today to put myself in this pool or to categorize myself with these names. But yeah, you look at guys that have used their real name that have a certain appeal to them. Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar, Dave Batista, Batista, Bill Goldberg, Goldberg, Michael Wardlow, Wardlow, like you said. So yeah, the Batista and the Goldberg things, that's always been a trippy thing to me. Cause yeah, I was a huge Goldberg fan growing up, of course. Um, so the whole Goldberg Batista Wardlow thing is just a little subtle thing. That's very, very cool to me. Also Kurt Angle, who you've been in the ring with, like you trained with Kurt Angle. Oh, yes. Dude, that guy, we clicked so well in the ring. I mean, just the first time we touched, it was just easy. I, I mean, we worked so well together and he's such a good dude. I mean, he, he would come train with us. You know, he was getting ready for his WrestleMania match. And then he would hang out after and just talk to us like, we were all friends. I mean, it, it was such a great experience getting a to work with him in the ring, uh, but also just to sit and kind of get to know him and and see who he is as a person. He's a great guy. And I think when you're surrounded by someone who has been there and done it, and, and you know, you do this every week on Rampage or Dynamite, you're backstage with these legends in the industry. It kind of makes you go, oh, if they can do it, if they've carved the path to get there. I can do it too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we're very blessed to have guys literally just mapping out our futures for us. Like they're literally just showing us the way. And we're very lucky to have the people we have backstage to guide us and educate us along the way. Whose brain do you pick the most? Like there's so many legends backstage in AEW. Whose brain do you think you pick the most? There's a lot. Um, so Big Show and Mark Henry, I've had some very good conversations with. Um, Arn Anderson, Jerry Lynn is one of the most helpful individuals I've ever met. He's, he helps everybody at every turn. Um, great guy. FTR and Sean Spears have given me a tremendous amount of knowledge, advice, uh, do's and don'ts. And I'm very appreciative of FTR and Spears. I mean, they've given me probably the most. And then uh, beyond that is Billy Gunn. Mm. He every week, every week gives me something, even if it's something tiny, he gives me something every week to work on. And every week I come back with that in mind. And then it's like, okay, did I do it? Yep. All right, now do this. So every week he gives me a little something. I'm very appreciative of Billy Gunn. I think it's like, it's such a testament to your hard work and who you are that your name is coming up a lot recently. Like you're making a lot of headlines recently. What do you attribute that to? What, just the, the recent? Well, there's, yeah, I mean, that, that's a really interesting one. I don't know how much you want to talk about that, but it's a really interesting thing that like people go, who would go from AEW to WWE? And like, you were at the top of everybody's list. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, I was always, I always believed I was going to walk in WWE's front doors and they were going to go, what took you so long? Get over here. So, so I'm, you know, I don't want to sound cocky, but I'm very confident that I, I was confident years ago and it didn't happen, you know, but I still feel like, a certain individual in that company would look at me and go, Oh, you're my guy. Yeah. Um, so I'm not surprised. I feel like I'm right up their alley of what their cookie cutter wrestler would be. Um, but Hey, they had their shot. Yeah. And you're a guy who's been with AEW since their first television program. And like, when you think about the AEW roster, think about you. Yeah, but sorry, to further answer your question, I think the recent, I think just with the storyline, you know, it's been building. I went from wrestling once every, you know, four months 
to I've been consistently on TV. Yeah. So I think, you know, out of sight, out of mind, maybe. So now we're starting to see me every week. The storyline's kind of getting a little more interesting. People are starting to see a different side of me other than just silent, standing there in a suit. Then obviously the CM Punk buzz. I think it's a little bit of everything. People are starting to see me kind of step up to that next level. And obviously maybe it's getting some attention. Well, you're, you've caught lightning in a bottle. Cause like you said, it's a bunch of things culminating at the same time. I want to take things back though, because you got on everybody's radar when you had the cage match with Cody. And I think that a lot of people went like, first of all, Cody moonsaulting off the cage, insane, but they went, other than that, that match was amazing. Thank you, man. Yeah, that, that is up there with the CM Punk match. The CM Punk match and the Cody match, those are the two best days of my life. Um, the, the two happiest days of my life. And that was the same thing, man. I, that match, the difference is CM Punk match, I actually took the time to enjoy myself. Mm. Like I finally just calmed down and I looked around at the crowd and, and I was in the moment. Truly the Cody match was like a blackout. It was, it was all business. It was like, let's get through this. Um, so I don't really remember much of the Cody match vividly. Like I, like I will the CM Punk match just because so much pressure first time on TV, first match, Cody and I had never touched. So it was, you know, before I walked out of the curtain, Tony Khan looked at me and said, you know, <laughs> don't F this up, you know? <laughs> so it's like all the pressure in the world, but I feel like I thrive in, in high pressure situations. I, I think that's what truly makes me, me is you put me in a high pressure situation. I will perform. Did Cody tell you, day of, you know what, I have, I've got a big spot in mind. I'm going to climb up. I'm going to do a moonsault off of here. Or had, he, had, he, had you guys been talking about it maybe the week prior? Uh, I think it was like the day before. The, I think the day before he's like, mm, I might or may, might not. And then it was I may like, or yeah. may not. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I haven't really thought about it yet. I got to get a feel for it. And then we not arrived. Like they, not like you can practice that either. No. Yeah. There's no practicing it. And then Sure enough, we come to the stadium and there's the cage is about six feet higher than it's supposed to be. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, this ought to be great. I mean, you've caught lots of people as they're coming off the top rope or, you know, from the ring to the outside. But I imagine that's a different setup. And honestly, my biggest fear was that. And I'm still surprised they didn't. I, I just I was afraid he was going to rip my arm out of my socket or, or tear something or pull something as that's a lot of weight coming down from very, very high up. Um, and all that impact was on my one arm and shoulder. So how we made it out of that with him just having, uh, I think a broken toe was all, we're very lucky. Man, when you sit next to somebody on an airplane, did they immediately go, yep, this guy's a pro wrestler. I get that a lot. I actually, I actually had to stop wearing um, any type of sports hoodies, like uh, professional football. Any, if I put a professional football jacket, shirt, hoodie on, everybody comes up to me. Oh, you play for that team. You play for that team. So I just stopped. Wearing, like I would wear my Ohio State hoodie. And everybody's like. Oh, you play on Ohio State? It's like, no. And then I go, I'm a professional wrestler. And then that sparks a whole new conversation. Right. But I get, what do you do for a living a lot? <laughs> and they're expecting like one of three things, I'm sure, is the answer. Yes. <laughs> you can't be like, well, I'm actually an accountant. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that, that used to be me, kind of. I worked at a car dealership behind a desk. So, Were you selling cars? No, I ran... Uh, the service facility. So I managed the mechanics and all yeah, the, yeah. the cars coming in that needed work done. And I was the bearer of bad news. Hey, you came here for an oil change, but you need a thousand dollars worth of work. Yeah. And then they're like, do I really, Michael, do I? Yeah. And then I would just flex and they'd be like, oh, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> so curious to hear about people's 
life before they go full time into wrestling. So when you were working in the Indies, you were also working at a car dealership. Yeah, which is why, you know, the Indies took me so long to really get a groove because I can only I work so much and I can only wrestle like twice a month. Sure. Which I mean, you're not going to get too far doing that. So I did that for years and then finally, you know, got some opportunities and just finally quit the job and moved in with my parents and just went all in with it. So was AEW what was a, what allowed you to go in all in? No, um, it kind of started once I knew I was going to get an opportunity for a tryout. And that's how confident I was. I was wow. like, all I need is to get my foot in the door and it's game over. So once I knew I might be getting a tryout, I just said, I'm putting all my eggs in one basket and we're making it happen. And man, I, I did nothing for six months. No dates, no friends, no nothing. I completely secluded myself. And uh, it was just me and my dog for six months. I'd wake up every day and run and then eat and relax and then go to the gym sometimes twice a day. And I got into, at the time, the best shape of my life and, uh, and moved in with my parents and it was ready to go. We're going to do this tryout and then I'll move to Orlando. And then, wow. Yeah. And your dog's still <laughs> with you on this journey. <laughs> um, he is with my mother now because I am gone too much. So um, he's with my mother, which is good. I, I, they need each other. And so it gives me a reason to visit both of them at once, which is nice. So if you had blind faith that this was going to work out and congratulations, by the way, that you, you had the confidence in yourself. And then not only that, because a lot of people believe something's going to happen. And for whatever reason, life steer them, steers them a different way, but you put in the work to make this happen. So if you had the blind faith that this was going to work out, what do you now have the blind faith for in your own life that's going to work out two, five, 10 years from now? You know, I think about that and it's such a unique feeling of being confident that these things can happen, but also it being so astronomical that it's like, can it really happen? Mm. Um, you know, you see what Batista and The Rock are doing with their lives. You know, obviously my body can only hold up for so long and I want to wrestle for as many years as I can. I got a late start. That's on me. I have a lot, to, a lot of time to make up for. And I still want to have as long of a wrestling career as possible. I have a lot to accomplish. But when the day comes uh, that I can't go anymore, I would love um, to get into doing, you know, voiceover work or acting um, on, on some level. I would love to get into that at some point. You could just be Jason Momoa's stuntman. I say less. <laughs> big, <laughs> big Jason Momoa fan. So, yes, if if not his stunt double, just put me on screen with him and Batista, and we can just beat the hell out of each other on on the big screen. Sign me up for that. Jeez. So yeah, I, if I can't if I can't get Batista in the ring, I'll meet him on the big screen. Well, he told me he's never, ever returning. He, has, he actually told me he'd rather go broke than wrestle again. So I think you'll just have to share a screen with him. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. And I know he said that. So that's why I'm, I'm thinking I have a better chance at Hollywood. <laughs> so I, I imagine a lot of your day is eating chicken and working out and, you know, figuring out when you're going to be in the ring next. What do you do? Like, what do you do in your spare time that might surprise us? Um, I really enjoy mountain biking. I don't know if that's a surprise, but it's just one thing I really enjoy doing, uh, just to get a workout and be out in the woods is like my favorite thing. Um, but honestly, man, you know, I get asked this question and it really makes me realize I have a bit of a boring life. Like I genuinely love working out. Like that is when I'm at home, that's the highlight of my day. So my whole day is based around going to the gym. Um, so yeah, I just, I wake up, I eat, 
and then you relax or you run some errands, go to the grocery store, eat some more. And then you, you just eat every few hours until it's time to go to the gym. And then you go to the gym and come home and eat some more and <laughs> until you go to bed. I mean, I don't know. That might be sad, but I love it. Do you bring your meals with you when you travel? I do. So I when do. you, let's say for dynamite, how many meals do you pack in your suitcase? Uh, so I actually, I, I travel, travel day. I bring my meals okay. because when I'm at dynamite, our catering actually has everything I need. They also have like cookies and chocolate cake though as well. They do. <laughs> there are healthy options and not healthy options. So it takes, yes, a lot of willpower to walk through, walk through the buffet and grab the rice and the chicken and avoid all the snacks. But I think, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure catering is amazing, but what about when you wake up Wednesday morning in the hotel? What are you eating? Oh, um, yeah, I usually, um, if there's a place to go to breakfast that has what I need, I'll go. If not, I'll Instacart stuff right to my hotel. Um, but my normal breakfast, as of right now, it changes here and there. Uh, but it's been this for, gosh, almost four or five months now. It's going to continue to be this, I think, for the next few months. Uh, for breakfast, we're having eight egg whites, uh, five tablespoons of almonds, a cup of blueberries, six ounces plain Greek yogurt, and I just eat um, some plain rice cakes for a little bit of carbs. So you're counting macros is what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Everything's getting weighed and measured. And- <laughs> Yeah, we're we're on point right now. How many calories in total for a day? Uh, it's it's give or take around thirty five hundred. Okay, calories. Yeah. And without getting too deep into the weeds here, but what's the split look like with carbs and fats and protein? I'm just so fascinated by this. Um. So I have let's see, Monday through Thursday are high carb days. Friday and Sunday are low carb days. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Monday through Thursday, mid carb. Friday, Sunday, low carb. Saturday, high carb. Hmm. So, uh, you know, we we put the carbs in and out. I have days where I get to load up, days where we take it easy. Uh, I know as we get a little closer to pay per views and stuff, we cut carbs a little extra, which always sucks. But, but yeah, we've been just kind of experimenting with me. Uh, kind of trying to find what works for me, what foods um, I react well to, what what we need to cut out, what we need to add. Uh, so we've kind of over the past year have been perfecting the diet and, and the training to try to get me where we want to be. And we, I think we nailed it. The yeah. Past, the past yeah, few I'd months. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah, look, to look jacked in a suit is not an easy accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Have no, you thought diet, about wrestling in trunks instead of the singlet to really show yourself off? What will I? Is yeah. that what you ask? I, I mean, uh, maybe one day. I might one day. Yeah, we'll see. I man, the 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 more of the singlets I get and the prettier they are, the the less I want to change my gear. Cause man, that purple one I think had more. <laughs> I think there's more reviews on my gear than the match itself. <laughs> You have great gear. You have great gear. (laughs) I I will say, I think I have the best gear in pro wrestling. At least that purple set was. But uh, yeah, one day. It's January as we're having this conversation right now. What do you think is in store for Wardlow in the rest of 2022? Man. It's crazy. It's only January. And I've already wrestled CM Punk. I celebrate my birthday in two days. Happy and early birthday. Thank you. And next week we're in Cleveland. So it's like January's already just bananas. So if this is any indication of what's to come for the rest of this year, I, uh, I envision myself having a very, very, very good year. I, like you said, the year's already off to such an amazing start for you. That. It's been the best month in the world so far. 
What are the odds that we might see a match with MJF at some point this year? Oh, God. Who knows, man? I mean, obviously tensions have been high and he loves adjusting my contract and he seems to make changes to it weekly, which is starting to uh, get under my skin a little bit. You know, but we've been together for two years, you know. You know, he pays me to watch his back. So, you know, that's technically my job. So I will continue to do so as long as uh, I'm under contract to do so because that's my job and I do my job and I do it well. But, you know, who knows what happens? You know, I know that contract isn't forever. So who knows what will happen down the road? I'm so excited for what this year has in store with uh, for you. And I'm just so glad we were able to have this conversation. Me too, man. Me too. I think I have a feeling later this year, we'll be doing this again. I Sounds think we're going to have to talk about. I end every conversation with the same question. Cause I'm all about gratitude. I wake up and I say out loud three things that I'm grateful for. So for you, Right now, what are three things in your life that you're grateful for? Uh, number one, my health. Because without our health, we are nothing. So I, I'm very thankful to just be healthy. Um, I'm thankful for AEW because uh, they made my childhood wildest dreams come true and continue to do so every week. Um. And I'm just thankful for the support I have um, personally in my life, my mother and uh, my girlfriend and, you know, friends and family that just show me so much love and support and are always uh, in my corner. I love it. I've also been thinking this whole interview that the bass in people's ears from your voice is just booming right now. Oh God, really? <laughs> well, think about it. Come on, it's great. Uh, yeah, I know. I get comments. See, I used to get comments when I worked at the car dealership. I, once a week, I would have a customer tell me, "You have a great voice for radio. You should really be doing radio." And so that's why I said the voiceover thing. I feel like maybe I might have a good voice for doing voiceover work. I don't know. Yeah, you've got the next sixty years of your life to figure that out, really. <laughs> yeah, all right. You can, I mean, you'll always be able to speak, so you know you can be a voiceover artist in your sixties and seventies, maybe. Absolutely, yeah. That'll be the retirement plan. Done. But Love we're not it. Retired for a long time. <laughs> Wardlow, thank you so much. This has been so insightful and just like a really great peek at like behind like at who you actually are. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, man. I really appreciate. Uh, being able to do this, like I said, it's been on the bucket list for a while. And I'm excited for people to get to see a little different side of me. So very cool. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you, man. 